Good morning, dear friends. And on this Saturday before Pentecost, we gather to celebrate God's love. We gather at a very difficult time where our world is struggling with a very bad virus. But we also gather at a difficult time for our country where there is so, so much civil unrest and violence. So we pray for God's peace, that God may touch the minds and hearts of all those who are justifiably angry, but are so unjustifiably, um, so unjustified in their actions of destroying properties and businesses. Pray that God may help us to moderate our frustrations and our anger and address it to making sure our society is healthier, more hospitable, more just, and more fair. And so today I also want to pray for all those who have birthdays today. I pray for my aunt, uh, Auntie Boy, pray and ask that God may bless her on her birthday and grant her many more healthy and happy years. I pray for all those who have died during this time. Pray for those who are sick and pray for those who take care of our sick. I'd like to pray for those whose businesses are in trouble at this time. Now, those who have lost jobs and are unemployed. But above all at this time, please, let us pray for this country. Pray for all those who have to make decisions to bring calm and understanding for local and civil leaders that may all come together and look for a better way to address whatever pain and an injustice we feel. Let us sing today the beautiful hymn to our Blessed Mother, a Holy Queen and True Love. If holy queen and true O Maria, Hail Mother of mercy and of love, O Maria, triumphal ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim heaven on earth we sound the hymn salve 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 regina the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, we are gathered on a very difficult time. I'm sure this is very difficult for everyone. So we must pray for each other. And we must pray for our country here and pray for the civil disobedience that is going on right now that is no longer civil that has become some more violent disobedience. Pray that people may moderate their own emotions and their own rage and anger they feel and think about how we cannot fix one injustice with another injustice. May God help us to judge what is right and to do what is right, especially at this time. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. Dear God, look with mercy on our world and on the bloodshed and the violence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Look with mercy on our sick world, ravaged by this coronavirus, and help us focus on this enemy and not be distracted by all the other, other, other issues. Lord, have Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, look at our leadership in the world, and please speak to the hearts and minds of leaders that they may seek ways and set up policies that will benefit all of God's children. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray.
grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the splendor of your glory may shine forth on us, and that by the bright rays of your Spirit, the light of your, the light of your life may confirm the hearts of those born again by your grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is the reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When he entered Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldiers who was and this with the soldier who was guarding him. Through this letter, he called together the leaders of the Jews. When they had gathered, he said to them, "My brothers." Though I have done nothing against our people and our ancestral customs, I was handed over to Romans, to the Romans as a prisoner from Jerusalem. After trying my case, the Romans wanted to release me because they found nothing against me deserving a death penalty. But when the Jews objected, I was obliged to appeal to Caesar even though I have no accusation to make against my own nation. This is the reason, then, I have requested to see you and to speak with you, for it is on account of the hope of Israel that I wear these chains. He remained for two full years in lodgings. He received all who came to him, and with complete assurance and without hindrance, he proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ the word of the Lord thanks be to God the just will gaze on your face O Lord the just will gaze on your face O Lord the Lord is in his holy temple the Lord's throne is in heaven his eyes behold his searching glance is on mankind. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The Lord searches the just and the wicked. The lover of violence he hates. For the Lord is just. He loves just deeds. The upright shall see his face. The just will gaze on the face of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I will send to you the Holy Spirit of truth, says the Lord. He will guide you to all truth. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Peter turned and saw the disciple following whom Jesus loved, the one who had also reclined upon his chest during the Last Supper and had said, Master, who is the one who will betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, What if I want him to remain until I come? What concern is it of yours? You follow me. So the word spread out among the brothers that the disciple would not die. That Jesus had told him that he would Jesus had not told him that he would not die. Just what if I want him to remain until I come? What concern is it of yours? It is this disciple who testifies to these things. And has written them and we know that his testimony is true there are also many other things that the Lord Jesus did but if these were all described individually I do not think the whole world would contain the books that would be written the gospel of the Lord praise to you Lord Jesus Christ My dear friends, this is not a very pleasant morning. I don't know anyone in this country 
who is happy this morning. We are all unhappy for different reasons. We are all unhappy for more than one reason. We are unhappy because we have lost 100 plus thousand of our own citizens to a virus within three months. We are sad and unhappy because in spite of that, we, can, we still cannot come together and honor all those we have lost. Instead, we're causing more unnecessary pain on ourselves at a time like this. We're sad because someone who should have been alive is not. We're sad because businesses that should be thriving and serving their communities are now destroyed and burned down or looted. We're sad because more and more things are happening that should not be happening. So this is not a happy day. This is not a happy time for anyone. And it doesn't matter whether you vote red or you vote blue. It doesn't matter. This is not a happy time for anyone. Unfortunately, it's not something that anyone could choose to stop without first choosing to reform how he or she thinks and behaves and acts. So we need to pray. We pray that God may touch the minds and hearts of everyone who is justifiably upset, angry, enraged, but that he must also give us a spirit of counsel, good judgment, to recognize that moderation of our actions and our responses, it's our responsibility. It behoves us not to fix injustice with injustice. The venerable Martin Luther King Jr. said, you cannot destroy hate with hate. You cannot destroy darkness with darkness. You, you can only destroy hate with love, in darkness with light. And, and so if, if we are unhappy that injustice or indignities are meted out on a subset of our population, we cannot fix that by being unfair, unjust, and acting, acting with disregard for the life and property of others. It doesn't work that way. We cannot heal our society that way. I understand the centuries of injustice that black America has suffered. Yes, there is impatience. Yes, people cannot wait. But sure, we can judge what is right. Because the person whose property is destroyed has done us or done you no harm. It isn't right. So we must pray. We must pray that God may help us. We pray especially that our Blessed Mother, the Queen of our land, may touch this nation, touch our leaders, from the federal to the very local level, touch our community organizers, that we may all come together and build a nation that is worthy of the pride of our founders. Today, I would like to reflect with you very quickly on the readings. In the Gospel reading, we see how John the Evangelist, in more than several instances, referring to himself as a disciple that Jesus loved. That is a very curious description of one by himself because it is only in John's Gospel that you find that reference, the disciple that Jesus loved. No one else, no other evangelist refers to John that way. He speaks of himself 
in those very glowing terms, the disciple whom Jesus loved. It, it must have made him feel so good to know that he was loved. It's always a good feeling to know that you are loved. It is one thing to be told you are loved. Your pride will be knowing that you are loved. And John knew and felt that he was loved. And he was so proud and braggadocious about it. He wanted everyone to know that he was loved. I don't know if that's the kind of thing that you feel when you think about the Lord. But I believe that John wasn't just speaking for himself. He was modeling for us the nature of relationship that we should have with the Lord. That we should feel, instead of John, the disciple, John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, that should be you, that should be me. Because Jesus did not love John more than he loved Peter or anyone else. He loved them all the same. Because only God can do that. Yes, as parents, as human beings, we can choose. We can grade our love. And some we can we could even hate. God has no hate. God is love. But is it possible for me or for you to feel and speak of ourselves in the same terms that the Apostle John did? always seeing himself as a beloved, always speaking of himself as a beloved, and always feeling about himself as a beloved. That has a way of changing how we comport ourselves in the world. If you feel loved, if you know you are loved, and if you are truly loved, it shows in how you behave. It shows in how you react. It shows in how you talk. It shows in how you do everything you do. When you don't feel loved, when you don't know that you are loved, when you cannot be touched with that feeling of love, it also shows that when we are irritable, we angry, we upset, we discontent, and so the feeling of love, it's like, it's like a cure for chronic anxiety, for chronic depression, for chronic hate, for everything that is wrong with a human being. Love cures and heals all of that. And so the hope is that having been invited by God to this relationship of love, that we would respond like John did, totally, completely, and wholly. That we are able to also feel and appropriate the Lord Jesus and his love as John did. Believe me, it will change how you act. It will change how you think. It will change how you feel. It will change how you do everything. But until we are able to do that, we are condemned to hate. We are condemned to uncontrollable anger and rage. We are condemned to destructive violence. We are condemned to treat each other as goods and commodity, commodified goods and not human beings with dignity and irreplaceable value. We need to pray. We pray for our police. They do a difficult job, I must tell you. I wear the uniform, I know what that feels. I can understand what they do. They do a difficult job. But the nature of your job should not be an excuse to treat others with indignity because there are many, many, many outstanding, super outstanding police out there who do their job with respect and honor for the dignity of their citizens. They know who they serve. They know they serve the American people. Bad cops like this make their work more difficult. 
and they should have no place in the police force. They belong in one place. They belong in jail. Honestly, believe me, every bad cop belongs in jail, not on the free streets of our society, causing mayhem and havoc. Everything we are seeing today in this country right now with the violence and the burning and the destruction and the looting may never have happened except for the action of one bad cop. May have been prevented by the action of one bad, one good cop. And so let us pay attention to this moment that what you do as one individual could have unimaginable consequences. If you choose to love, it was one action of one individual and three others, bystanders who did nothing that has put America in this spiral of mayhem and destruction. Action of one individual. That tells you that what you do and what I do matter. What we do have consequences. Consequences for good or for evil. For light or for darkness. For love or for hate. What we do, it matters. So I pray and I hope that we will feel the love of God and recognize that as one individual, I could cause a lot of pain, but I could also cause a lot of happiness and joy in people's hearts. The choice is mine and the choice is yours. And this is not just about police. It's about everyone. Whether you are a teacher, a nurse, a priest, you clean the streets, you're a grocery worker, a politician, Every parent, a dad, every one of us, your action, your actions have consequences for good or for evil. This is what the psalmist said, and I'll close with that. The Lord searches the just and the wicked. So it's not only searching the wicked. He also searches the just. The Lord searches the just and the wicked. The lover of violence he hates. It doesn't matter the nature of violence, whether it's racial or the violence against people's businesses. The Lord hates violence. For the Lord is just. He loves just deeds. The upright shall see his face. The upright, only the upright, the one who seeks justice, the one who seeks, who does just deeds, is loved and beloved of God. And only he or only she will see or behold the face of God. May God help us, especially as we prepare for Pentecost tomorrow. That this new experience of Pentecost, this new Pentecost, may be a moment to heal our hearts, and heal our country, heal our world, and heal the pain and hate and hurt that people feel today. As always, I like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God. That God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most merciful God, today we want to pray for victims of human injustice around the world, but especially for our country here. Injustice is not only endured or tolerated by black people. It is endured and suffered by women, by unborn children, by minorities of other races. It is tolerated and suffered by gay people, by poor people, by old people. We act in unfair and unjust ways to too many people. Help us, O oh God, to recognize that our actions have consequences. And help us to choose right at all times as a people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose businesses have been affected or impacted in some way and communities affected by this violence, O oh God. We pray that leaders, that all citizens may accept their responsibility as leaders 
every citizen is a leader that we may accept that responsibility as leaders and act as such that we may eschew violence act more justly act more fairly and act more kindly to one another we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayers we pray for our president we pray especially at this time that you, O oh Lord, may give him a sense of good judgment. That what he says may be heard in ways that could heal our country and not cause more harm. We pray for our governors. We pray for our mayors. Pray for those who make our laws in the Senate and the House of Representatives. Pray for local leaders. May the Holy Spirit speak peace into their hearts, O oh God. May the Holy Spirit speak responsibility and concern for the common good into their hearts, O oh God. From their mouths, may they speak words that will heal and calm the tension and the anger in this nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all our, those who are still sick with the coronavirus. Pray especially at this time. This isn't, this isn't the time where people should be outside in these numbers. That they will be protected. They will be kept safe. Just so that our nation is not set back again by this virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our Blessed Mother, the Queen of America, to pray for us as we say, Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, so loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual food. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Pour, upon, pour out upon these gates the blessing of your spirit, we pray, O Lord, so that through them your church may be imbued with such love that the truth of your saving mystery may shine forth for the whole world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestow the Holy Spirit today on those you make your adopted children by uniting them to the only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came, from, came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise 
and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring all to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of our peace. From me to you, May God's peace rest and abide with you. May God's peace bless and heal this land. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Gracious God, as your children open their minds and hearts to receive you spiritually, we beg you that your Holy Spirit may minister to them and may bring the blessings and the 
the blessings and the graces that flow from this sacrament to nourish and nurture their hearts, their souls, and their spirits. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. May this gift we have consumed benefit us, O Lord, that we may always be aflame with the same Spirit whom you wondrously poured out on your apostles. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host. By the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world seeking the wings of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I hope that you are able to join us tomorrow for Pentecost Mass at the same time, 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. Um, Eastern. And if you are watching us in Nigeria, that will be 2 p.m. in the afternoon. It's always a life to end, even at a difficult time like this, to remind you that God loves you very much. And I hope you can feel that love like John felt and owned. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. To the prayers of our blessed mother. May God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing the summons. Will you come and follow me? If I beg for your name, will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you? And you in me. Will you leave yourself behind if I beg call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and give or be the same? Will you reach the hostile stake? Will you, should you pluck or lie for scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me?